Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. So over the past 10 years, I've been working to restore the rights of people in California and really people across this country who have had their Second Amendment rights restricted. Now, over those 10 years, California has never ceased to amaze me and they've done it once again. We're talking about the case of Duncan v. Bonta, which is the California magazine ban case. This case is nearing a close. It is almost over and I feel like we're gonna win this one. But wait till you hear California's arguments and why they think that they should win, saying basically that, well, magazines are protected by the Constitution and so much more. You guys will not believe this. Stay tuned. This video is sponsored by Acre Gold, which in my opinion is the best way to get into gold. This is how I got into gold because we all know that gold is very expensive. So the upfront cost to get into gold can be quite a bit. Acre Gold lets you buy gold incrementally. Acre Gold has four different subscription plans. A new $30 plan for a one gram bar, a $50 plan, a $100 plan, and a $250 plan for a 10 gram bar. When your gold stash adds up, so each month that you pay for your subscription, it adds up. Once you get enough money for a 2.5 gram bar on the $50 plan, they ship you out a physical 2.5 gram bar of gold. Now, they also have that $100 subscription plan, which gets you into a 5 gram gold bar. Now, if you don't feel like storing gold on site is an option for you, Acre Gold also has a way to buy digital gold so that they'll keep the gold safe for you. And I suggest that you go over to their website, which I'm gonna link down below and check it out for yourself and figure out which one is gonna be the best option for you. So start your investment in your future today and click that link to Acre Gold below. So post Bruin, a lot of California's gun control has been thrown up in the air. That includes Duncan v. Bonta, which has found its way back to Judge Roger T. Benitez, also known as St. Benitez, for giving California its Freedom Week. Now, as part of the new proceedings, Roger T. Benitez, Judge Benitez, asked for both the plaintiff and the defendant to resubmit briefs post Bruin. So basically saying, after Bruin, why do you still believe that you have a case here? And so the plaintiffs, being Duncan in this case, and the defendants, being the state of California in this case, both submitted those briefs. This is California's brief. Listen to this. Now, the first thing I want to do is apologize for my voice. I've been dealing with some respiratory issues now for the past few weeks, and hopefully that'll be over soon. But uh, this is the brief that was submitted by California. It was submitted on November 10th of 2022, and it basically just starts out by acknowledging Bruin. Now, after they acknowledge a Bruin decision is probably when you're going to want to sit down because your head's going to start spinning from this one. So California says the Supreme Court's decision in the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association, Inc. v. Bruin, fundamentally altered the legal standard for evaluating Second Amendment challenges to firearms regulations. Instead of the two-step framework that the Ninth Circuit and most other federal courts of appeals had adopted for resolving those claims, Bruin held that courts must apply a standard rooted in the Second Amendment's text as informed by history. Under this new text and history standard, courts must determine whether the Second Amendment's plain text protects the conduct in which the plaintiff wishes to engage. And if it does, then decide whether the regulation is consistent with the nation's historical traditions of firearms regulations. But at the same time, eh, now you hear that but right there. Everything, everything prior to the but basically means that they don't care about it. But at the same time, the court also made clear that the Second Amendment is not a regulatory straitjacket. It does not prevent states from adopting a variety of regulations uh, and experimenting with reasonable firearms regulations. I mean, experimenting to address the threats to the public. That's, that's you know, it, you, no, you don't get to experiment with the Second Amendment. Under the court's text and history standard and consistent with the Supreme Court's Second Amendment pre precedents, California restrictions on large capacity magazines are permissible exercise of state's police powers that fully comport with the Second Amendment's text and history. The court should uphold, challenge, uphold the challenged provision of California Penal Code Section 32310, which basically governs California's magazine ban. Now, here's where they say why the court should uphold 32310. First, plaintiffs, being Duncan, cannot show the plain text of the Second Amendment covers their proposed conduct of manufacturing, purchasing, importing, possessing, and carrying large capacity magazines. Under Bruin's text and history standard, plaintiffs must, as a threshold matter, uh, demonstrate that the Second Amendment's protection for people keeping or bearing arms for self-defense covers their proposed conduct 
i.e. possessing large capacity magazines. Plaintiffs in this case cannot meet that burden because large capacity magazines are not arms for Second Amendment purposes because they are not essential for the operation of any firearm. And even if large capacity magazines were essential to the operation of a particular firearm, such magazines are not entitled to Second Amendment protection because they are not commonly used for self-defense. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so they're not protected. Um, that's one of the reasons they're, they're saying here is because they're not protected, uh, does not fall into the Second Amendment, and they're saying they are not in common use for self-defense. Now, here's the thing. Uh, they are in common use. As a matter of fact, based on the latest statistics, they make up over half of all magazines uh, out there right now. So they actually hold a vast majority of what is held by the public. Okay, so here's the second part of their argument. And I think after reading these two paragraphs, you guys will get a pretty good understanding of where California is trying to come from here and why I don't think they have a, uh, a leg to stand on. Second, even if the plain text of the Second Amendment covers possession of large capacity magazines, the Attorney General has satisfied his burden in demonstrating that California's restriction on large capacity magazines are consistent with the nation's historical traditions of firearm regulation. So my, my question after that is, where in history do we see a regulation like that that's been upheld? And one thing I want you guys to pay close attention to here is at the end of this paragraph, they actually admit that there is no historical precedence for a regulation like this. So they, they actually admit it themselves. Now, the rest of the paragraph basically says why they have this LCM ban. So they're talking about unprecedented social concerns and safety issues, stuff like that. Now, here at the next paragraph is where they actually say and they admit that they don't have historical precedent to stand on, which means they don't have a leg to stand on. Obviously, the Attorney General cannot identify restrictions identical to Section 32310 from 1791 or 1868 for the simple reason that LCMs did not yet exist at either time. But that is not the Attorney General's burden. Well, actually it is, because under Bruin, the state has to prove that it you know, stands uh, with uh, the historical tradition of uh, Second Amendment regulation. Section 32310 is constitutional, so long as it imposes a comparable burden on the right of armed self-defense as it is historical as its historical predecessors, and so long as the burdens of the modern and historical laws are comparably justified. This is the case here. So what California is trying to say here is that they don't need to find something in the past that's a, a dead ringer or is exactly the same as 32310 in order to prove that there's precedent. They just say they have to look back and find something that is somewhat similar to use as precedent. But they never once say what that is. In this entire thing that I read, I didn't hear a single reference to what exactly they're using as precedent to say that there's a long-standing historical tradition of this particular type of Second Amendment regulation. It did not exist. It does not exist. As a matter of fact, into the 20th century, long into the 20th century, it did not exist. So the reasons for them actually saying that they believe it's constitutional also don't exist. So, uh, California, again, says that they have a right to ban them. And I wanted to make you guys aware of that. That is the latest document that has been updated in this particular case, Duncan v. Bonta. So, we're going to have a hearing on this. It looks like it's going to be middle of December, and we'll find out a little bit more about what's going on then. In the meantime, hopefully I get my voice back, and uh, we learn a little bit more as to which way this is going to go. But just the fact that it's sitting in front of Judge Roger T. Benitez, I think you guys know where this is going to go. After that, we'll see. So I want to thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to like this video if you have a second. Subscribe, and have a great weekend.